Hello and welcome back to Kaiserreich. So I had a look at the various doctrine trees. This air doctrine tree over here, Operational Integrity. I think uh, in general this is kind of like, uh, like the name is good. But the description I think is very misleading because this tree, while it does give a lot of bonuses to the missions that a tactical bomber might carry out, it doesn't really, like, it doesn't really rely heavily on tactical bombers in general. I wouldn't say this this tree is necessarily like characterized by tactical bombers at all. Uh, like as opposed to what the description here might have you think. This this is more of a a, a tree of um, like making the most out of a uh, out of the least basically like having a lot of um, like ace generation chance interception mission efficiency stuff like that. Fighter detection makes it so that you can really like air superiority here. Makes it so that you can like make a a lot of out of a lot out of a poor situation. Like if you don't have a lot of fighters, a lot of bombers, etc., etc. Meanwhile, these ones I think are in general stronger, especially this one on the far left here. The strategic destruction one is kind of nice. Uh. And the, the battlefield support one, which I, I think might be the best one uh, in general, if you have a strong industry. Because you've got these, uh, like, ace generation chance at uh, 25% is really, really good. Yeah, either way, um, I think the plan is going to be to go with land doctrine here. Uh, and go with the superior battle or superior fire power doctrine because I think we got to a um, kind of a oh my bad my bad uh, kind of like um, a soft uh, a soft like uh, consensus in the comments I think that superior fire power was going to be the best. Uh, but we're not going to go with that one quite yet, because we have uh, this focus here, which will give us 100% extra research bonus for land, land doctrine. And um, if we get this one before we get that, the other one, we're obviously going to be better off because the bonus is going to carry us further. Because every bonus you get uh, will make it so that, you know, the subsequent stuff you do, basically, like, it, it's all, you know, the whole snow, snowball principle. Hearthstone 4 has a lot of that. I'm not quite sure if I agree with that as like a design principle. Having a bunch of like things that eventually snowball in order to make you, you know, stronger and stronger and stronger. Like you build out a stronger horizontal base, which makes it so that your, you know, the, the pyramid of your industry can reach higher. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure if I agree with that in gameplay terms. In... You know, in simulationist terms, it obviously models what actually happens. Like, if you have... I mean, if you, if you are more flexible because of your size and your, you know, your uh, your resources and stuff, you, uh, you obviously are going to be, be able to, you know, reach greater heights. Historically, this is like the case for most nations. But, uh... In game in, in gameplay terms, I'm not sure if I think I like it. But anyways, uh, we're playing the game. We're not criticizing it right now. Let's see. We have a lot of political power. Let us add some designers, and we are going to be making what next? We're going to be making not yet, not the uh, self-loading gun yet. Semi-automatic, I suppose. Then self-loaded gear. Like a Selbstlader or whatever, the German one. Apologies if you can hear me putting my water down. It's very hot in Norway right now, so I gotta keep staying like hydrated and stuff. Uh, especially because I have uh, the window closed, because I live quite near a very active road. And... Uh, yeah, so I, I kind of gotta have the window closed when I'm recording. I don't know if I have to. I do have a noise gate and stuff, which makes it so that you shouldn't be hearing the most egregious, like, 
tiny, uh, you know, most egregious, like, superfluous noises. But, um... Yeah, you're, you're going to be hearing some. And uh, when particularly very large vehicles drive by, I'm always paranoid about it being heard in the recording. Still not trading for anything. So, I, we don't need a uh, resource extraction. Like, the stuff we're gonna run out of, we don't have anyway, so, like, we're not... Uh, we, we have, yeah, only two chromium, really. And that is one thing we're gonna run out of. Uh, steel, actually, we might run out of... But we're not gonna run out of aluminium. But we don't have rubber, which is kind of uh, sad, because... A lot of production in Hearthstone 4 when you have, or that requires aluminium, is also paired with a requirement for rubber. Like, airplanes need rubber and aluminium. So, we generally don't have uh, the resources to be self-sufficient. And sadly, rubber is a thing that you generally cannot find in Northern Europe here. Our best bet to get rubber, I think, would be... I mean, we get three in Britain, but that's not really enough, is it? Our best bet for rubber, I think, would be, like, actually just getting, like, colonies and stuff. Which I don't, I don't really see that happening in the near future. It's gonna have to be trade. Yeah, there really is nothing here that we want to get yet. Maybe the light tank so we just have it ready? We're going to get a, a research bonus to this one, so we're not going to go with that one yet. I think we might go with the light tank one. Uh, so we got Nordicus starts bonded. That is Anasbea, that is the uh, uh, Norwegian National like Rail Corporation. Uh, it is a nationalized corporation, that, so basically all, uh, well, I believe most at least, uh, railways in Norway are operated by uh, Anasbea. However, uh, that changed recently with uh, some privatization happening under our uh, government led by this party still. The rails, I think, still are principally owned by the government, but the um, uh, the operation of the actual uh, cars and stuff uh, has all been, like, I think... I, I don't quote me on this, obviously, but I think it's basically been, like, outsourced to a company. Or, like, a, uh, a government-contracted company. And you got Tunis Mechanisk uh, Werkstead. Uh, Tunis Mechanical Workshop. I'm not quite sure where that one is or what its history is, but um, they both give exactly the same bonuses, so I'm gonna go with Enesbear because I'm familiar with it. It's kind of funny that the train manufacturer is going to make our tanks. Wait, hold on. Remove the effect uh, capabilities and all equipment research while, the, while they are hired. Motorized? What? Uh, I've actually never done a motorized research company, I think. There, only is, there is only one motorized uh, research, isn't there? Yeah, exactly. This isn't motorized, this is mechanized. Uh, I think we should actually go with that one, because... I mean, we're never not gonna have that motorized anyway, so... 
I mean, like, we're, we're gonna get that motorist anyways, and it's like the first one anyway, so... Yeah, we're gonna have that for that stuff. I don't really have a... Like, I don't really uh, use motorized all that much. I don't uh, know... Okay, yeah. the, uh, the Korean uprising failed. Yeah, I don't really uh, see a lot of use in motorized. Uh, at least not for Norway. Maybe if... Um, if you get some kind of wild breakthrough on Sweden, which I don't really see that happening, they have enough troops to almost cover our entire border. Uh, I see motorized more as like a thing you might be able to use in Russia or these kinds of regions, uh, though I would probably prefer cavalry in both, uh, both um, regards. Yeah, I wouldn't even use motorized down here. Maybe in America. Because uh, I feel like what you need for motorized is both uh, decent infrastructure and... I mean, you need oil, obviously. But yeah, decent inf infrastructure and just wide open spaces. And those often in Hot Sun 4 don't really mesh. If you've got a lot of wide open spaces, like in Russia, you don't have a lot of inf in Let's just go with uh, improved torpedo tubes. We can do some naval stuff here. It's quite uh, quite cheap research and uh, will be able to be applied to all of our subsequent uh, ships. Speaking of, are we actually producing any... Yes, we are, but we can't deploy. Uh, the Philippines have joined the co-prosperity sphere. So Japan has created a... Okay, so we've got the Empire of Japan with the National Populist Government, the Tohokai. And the Tohokai, I think, are... Let's see, yeah, they are the, like... Uh, the, um... Uh, how, how do you, how would you describe it? I think it's like, you know how in in uh, uh, the original timeline, uh, which is like the Kaiserreich term for our world, uh, the uh, the uh, like the government of Japan had this like strange nationalist um, Ushido ideology going on with uh, like uh, uh, the resurrection of of uh, mythical uh, like heroic qualities of the past. And I think this is like an even more extreme version of that. So like a pseudo-fascist uh, movement. It does look like the syndicalists will win in Spain. Which I think is what often happens. Uh, the Soviet Russians will lose though, I think. Moscow being completely encircled. I wonder how many troops are in this encirclement. Probably quite a lot. I kind of just want to just uh, keep this open. I might have just like fucked something up here because I didn't actually use the or didn't spot this one and. Uh, haven't effect or uh, like used my uh, industry effectively here, but I mean, I've never claimed to be very good at this game. Uh, let's see here. We should probably not have more naval dockyards because we don't have the manpower to actually use them. We can't deploy any of our ships, so we can't create new ones. But what we could do is actually have a lot of parallel um, production lines, I think. Let's see if we do... Might be able to cheese it a little bit here. Do this, and then... We agreed that uh, the B-class was the best, right? Yeah, let's uh, do this, and then just... Yeah, there we go. Um... Need a couple of military factories. 
I did stress building the uh, civilian factories, but I also do want to get a um, get a, uh, a stockpile going. That takes time to build up, especially with a an industry as weak as Norway's. Yeah, I want to I want to keep this open just to see if we get some um, extreme numbers on this uh, encirclement here. Oh, reconstitute the Bank of Norway. Also, the uh, this stuff is still. Very chaotic, very messy. Alright, let's see here. We should go with the army plan, as we said. And then... This is the uh, Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation, which is actually a still existent uh, inst institution in Norway. It's actually a very, very well-respected institution. It's kind of like the uh, BBC. British Broadcasting Corporation, but uh, I think in terms of like uh, journalistic uh, standards, uh, people tend to regard ours as better, but that might just be because uh, we don't, um, like our media doesn't really reach out into the uh, Anglosphere, and the Anglosphere does have a lot of like strange ideas about the press. To say the least. The Anglosphere being, of course, every country that speaks English natively. Like, uh, you know, England, Canada, America, Scotland, Wales, etc. Ireland. Yeah, I, I uh, love the Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation, known as the NRK a lot of good stuff. We could also reform the police. Gives us political power, but that is not something we need, and we can uh, organize Organization XU. What is Organization XU? What does it stand for? Unknown undercover agent? Enemy unknown? Nobody knows, only that it exists. Uh, is this an XCOM reference? Or... Organization XU. XU. Huh. And yeah, these are the labor agreements. So uh, we will end up with a conservative labor agreement because we chose the conservative government. For those we could get. Uh, oh, this one is actually really good. Political power 10%, consumer goods 10%, factory output 10%. Uh, this one is actually also really good, though, but uh, it's like... It's basically just weaker, but I think uh, this is the one that, like, distinguishes. So, uh, the labor agreement is going to be better if you get a uh, progressive government, like a, a labor government. But I think the economic effect is going to be slightly better, or different, I think, is a better term. Uh, if, if you do a conservative government over a labor one. Oh, well, that's kind of uh, stupid, because, um, I mean, we might wait until the next election to do this, because this is really good, having that uh, cap, because if you've watched me play the German Empire, I prefer having a line that goes for a long time over switching lines a lot, so I don't really care about retention, I want to have a cap. And this is retention, so this is all like constantly innovating, constantly making new designs, and constantly like swapping them out. I don't really care about that. And also, I'm a big fan of the uh, Norwegian mixed economy, like the Nor uh, Nordic model, but you know. I think most Scandinavians are. I mean, fans of the Nordic model, not the Norwegian one specifically. This one will give us, uh, like, because we export, we'll get someone else's factories, maybe, if they import uh, aluminium from us. But yeah, we'll go with the army plan, because then we have more stuff to research. I 
I'm very, very excited to see what happens when uh, this encirclement is like fully dealt with. In terms of uh, manpower. Because they've got divisions in every single one of these tiles, so that's at minimum like uh, 15,000, 30,000, 45,000. Like, I'm, I'm thinking there might be 100,000 men in this pocket. Even if you, like, uh, estimate them to have divisions which are very manpower poor, which, honestly, I don't know if... Um, I, I don't think that's a very Russian thing to do, to have divisions with little manpower in them. So, like, even if you, you estimate them to have low manpower in their divisions, like 10,000, that's still, like, 90,000 troops. Always a decryption and encryption when it's available because they are so important for combat bonuses. If you have less uh, encryption or more decryption than your, or sorry, if you have less, yeah, less encryption than your enemy and or less decryption, uh, they will get a, an, an intel bonus, which will basically, I think it's like, um, it's a pretty uh, major like change to the overall effectiveness of your armed forces. Okay getting squashed here now. Yeah, it, it's kind of like, um... Oh, the fall of Burgos. Burgos? Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's a uh, place in Spain. Reports from Burgos confirm the Carlist temporary capital has been captured by advancing ar narco-Spanish troops after skirmishes in the hilly countryside. Carlist forces put up a stiff resistance, hoping to delay the enemy for uh, forces but were in eventually beaten back. Castilians fleeing north of the Basque coast carefully describe seeing their homeland burning and CNT FAI co soldiers even committing atrocities on their own people. Rumors state that King Javier was escorted out with a flow of refugees by Carlos' militia, but his destination remains unknown. unknown. Many hope Carlos' Spain might continue fighting in the central plateau defend their homes from the crush of the syndicalist invasion. The Carlists cannot hope to come back from this. And Haiti uh, took... Or Haiti. 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 We, we say uh, Haiti. Uh, took uh, one state from the Dominican Republic. Capturing this region here. That is a, an immensely uh, poetic song name. Uh, okay, so we want to go with... Oh yeah, we want to get down this path fast because it gives us an extra re research slot and... You know, those do give us... Um, those do give us, like, uh, quite a lot of... Um, or that, that those give into, like, or the they, they um, contribute to the snowballing effect that I talked about earlier. The more you have of something, the more you get of everything else. The rich get richer, etc, etc.
Seems like we've, we're importing um, machine guns from uh, from the Americans, and uh, we're creating our own mortar throwers or mortar um, like light mortars, I think. Is this? Okay, so this is not a thing that happens a lot, I think. We have an independent uh, Slovakia. Bohemia, yeah, Bohemia I've seen before, but an independent Slovakia, that's... Um, I think that is very rare. Yeah, and they have a generic focus tree and they have a generic ruler and everything. I didn't notice that. Oh boy, wait. They pushed out of the... Uh... I mean, Soviet Russia might not be gone after all. The Russians just completely broke on this flank here. I wonder why that is. We have a lot of political power, so I may as well just send Attaché, get some uh, war experience, and we can also see what's happening here. Oh, okay, yeah, they just... They must have completely, like... Reorganized all their troops and just put them in a very silly position. Uh, which has given a lot of ground to the Soviets, but... Uh, this encirclement does look kind of wild with uh, at least three divisions on each uh, each tile. Dominionist victory in South Africa. Seen this several times, so they're, they're going to uh, try to uh, uh, like achieve closer ties to the Entente with the Commonwealth of Canada. And there we go. The Spanish Civil War is finally over, and it seems that the Iberian Federation has emerged triumphant. Much of the countryside lies in ruins, and order has not completely been restored, but the anarcho-Spanish government announced that the old feudal order has, has finally been put to rest and the people of Spain would now benefit from an orderly transition to a syndicalist regime. Massive crowds gathered in Barcelona to hail the returning militias and to offer a prayer that a new peace will return into a permanent one, or will turn into a permanent one. Spain has seen a lot of uh, civil strife, historically. And, I mean, they continue to do so with uh, the whole question of uh, Catalan independence. Or uh, Catalonian independence. Let's go with the uh, special forces for the cold and hot acclimatization. Uh, not, uh, or acclimatization or whatever. Uh, I'm not, uh, not really thinking we're ever going to have to acclimatize to a hot environment here in Norway. Despite me having to do that right now at this very moment with... Um, it being like 16 degrees outside Celsius, which uh, to a lot of you will probably be like, oh, I mean, dude, just wear a t-shirt, dude. Uh, yeah, but we're not used to it here. Our, ho our houses are all built to like com completely contain all heat and, you know, not even like not let go of it uh, at all. And uh, what that means is that when a ho house gets hot, it's going to stay hot. Yeah, we are closing to the end of the video now, so I'm going to do some casualty reports here. Figure out how many losses were taken in the Soviet-Russian uh, Civil War. 
So the Soviets have lost uh, collectively 1.24 million. Uh, that was at 1.18 million when I noticed the encirclement. So the encirclement here has still not been uh, vanquished. There's a small encirclement there as well. Uh, the Russians here, the well, the Re Republicans have lost 760,000. Who actually is there? Uh, so it's uh, yeah, Romanov. And uh, I, I forget these things sometimes. And I also conflate different playthroughs, like in the Finland playthrough, I think they've got Brangil. While here they've got Romanov. Oops. Hundred and six thousand for the Pacific uh, states and two hundred and twenty seven thousand for this front exclusively. Four hundred K on this front here. Whoa, hold on. They are fighting on this side though, but where is the war for... The Pacific States versus the Union State. They must have made the uh, the deal with the devil and I just didn't notice. No, they're, they're at war. Huh. I guess the, um, the Civil War just gets very messy with the uh, war breakdown. And during the Arabian Revolt here, we got 67,000 on the Ottoman Empire and 144,000 collectively on the Cairo Pact, with the Mushri Kingdom being capitulated and Persia getting close to capitulation. I've never actually seen Iran get uh, uh, capitulated or Persia get capitulated uh, in this war. Wonder what will happen. Maybe we'll see like, oh boy, whoa, I didn't see this. Ferdinand I has taken Constantinople. Is that really called... Why is that called Constantinople? Did that change when he took it or... Because surely it should be Istanbul. Right? In this uh, point in the timeline. Uh, either way, we are at the end of the video, so... Like usual, please check the links in the description for Twitter, Patreon, and all that. A Humble Bundle, where you can buy our Humble Bundle affiliate link, where you can buy this game, uh, the expansion, and all that. And it will give me a small cut if you do so, with uh, no extra cost to you. You get a Steam key and all that jazz. Uh, other than that, I don't have much to say. Uh, please uh, continue the discussions that you've been doing in the comments. I think those are great, uh, especially like the ones that share a bunch of knowledge that, about you know, what's going on that I don't know about. Uh, I'm very appreciative of, uh, appreciative of those comments. Thank you for that. Either way, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.